welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chelsea and I'm a full-time reseller. I sell on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. And you have jumped in on day three of my listing challenge. I'm trying to get up 100 listings this week. Not doing so hot right now. I still need to tally up where my total is, but yesterday I kind of had a day where I just needed to do some um, paperwork type stuff. I had to finish my taxes and do update my spreadsheets. And then I cleaned up my Poshmark room because I had flat lay stuff out. So I put all that away. It's just a lot of cleaning and organizing, putting away all the shoes I just photographed, just lots of um, organizational stuff. But I did relist a bunch of stuff on eBay and Mercari and Poshmark and um, posted my VA's work. And I did list a few things, so I'll show those to you, but I am a little bit behind. Um, I'm gonna have to total up my numbers and let you know what that is in just a minute here. But before we do that, let me jump on and show you what I have sold over the past two days and just kind of give you an idea of what sells for me as a full-time reseller selling on multiple platforms. Okay. Okay, the thing about being a reseller is that <laughs> sales can be a roller coaster. So yesterday morning, I only had sold, I think one thing, and then a couple more sales came in throughout the day. And then today I woke up to like two offers and then I made a sale. So it's just some days it's like, you don't make a lot. And then some days it's like, they just come pouring in. So anyway, first sale I made, actually this is out of order. This is from today and then we're gonna go back to yesterday. So I sold this basket. It's just like a picnic basket. I picked this up at a garage sale for a dollar. And um, it did have some like discoloring on the inside. So that's why I priced it like I did. I think I priced it at $30 and then I lowered it to 25 and then someone offered me like 18, I counted up 20. So that's what we settled on. So I made um, $16 after fees. After my cost of goods, I profited about $15 on that item. Next were these Disney Nightmare Before Christmas, PJ Jogger pants. Now these, these were crazy. I think these accumulated 50, they, they accumulated 52 likes. They also got a lot of interest on eBay and Mercari, but I just think because they're not a super substantial piece, people didn't want to pay that shipping on Poshmark. Now, I don't know what the deal was on Mercari and eBay, but these took forever to list, but I did send out a competitive offer just because I wanted them gone. So I sent out a $12 offer with a shipping discount. So after that, I made $7.55. This cost me a little over a dollar at the Goodwill outlet. So about, you know, $6.50 in profit there. Okay, next were these Franco Sardo leather Paloma ankle strap pumps. Picked these up at the Goodwill outlet a few months ago. Um, the buyer made me an offer for $20, which I gladly accepted. I think I had them listed at 25. So definitely a reasonable offer there. So after my Poshmark fees, I made $16, cost me a little over a dollar, so around $14, $15 in profit. Next is this sweater I got from my grandma. I bought this at her garage sale for $1.50, I think, and it sold for $20, finally. It did have some staining on it, so that's why I feel like it took a little while to sell, but it was just a Charlevoix, Michigan shirt. Um, after fees, I made $16 after my cost of goods, right around $15 in profit. Okay, next was this vintage tan, lace applique fit and flare dress so this was like a really really pretty dress i absolutely love this dress however it did have multiple little stains on it now the stains were not like super big but there was lots of like little stains so i there's so many pictures of stains because i wanted to just disclose them all i honestly probably could have made a collage of these stains because then it would be less overwhelming like having so many pictures of flaws Overall, this dress is wearable, but it did have stains. So that's why it sold, I think, for so low. It was a really cute dress. It got some good interest, but I relisted it. Um, I think I relisted it at $15 just because I wanted it to go. Someone offered me 10, I accepted that. So I made $7 in profit. Got it from the Goodwill outlet, so about $6 in profit there. Okay, so next was this um, Tadashi Soji dress. And I just realized I did not have that in the title. I had the style name in the title, which was the Merlene Racerback Sequin Embroidered Dress, which was a really long title, but I probably should have put the brand name in the title as well. Anyway, this took a while to sell. I bought this um, probably about six or seven months ago. However, I feel like it's just approaching the time now when people are actually going to a lot of special events and there was need for this dress. So this actually sold at my full asking price of $150. I got this from Plato's Closet. I traded in some inventory 
for this dress. I'll link that video right here if you wanna go watch it and see what I traded in. Um, both of the items that I traded in my inventory for have sold now. So I think it was a pretty good trade. So yeah, this sold for $150. After fees of $30, I earned $120. So that was a really good profit there, just trading in some Ben's items for this dress. Okay, next were these J brand for theory cropped rail jade pants. Now green or colored jeans in general just don't seem to fetch as much money. These also had one little spot on them that I was sure to disclose. It was just like a probably something that would have come out in the wash, but I just listed them as is. Anyway, after my Poshmark fees, I profited $16, got these from the Goodwill outlet. So that's about $15 I made on these. Okay, this was a really exciting sale because I had no idea these games were worth like anything. So I listed this game yesterday and it sold within like a couple hours and it sold via the global shipping program. Um, it also sold as a promoted listing, which oops, I actually have my closet set up right now where it's like everything I list will end up being promoted just because I was having trouble making sales on eBay. I find that when I just have that little bit of promoted listing in each of my listings, it really just helps. It's the, um, I have the promoted listing where it chooses the right amount. It's like adjusted promotions or something up to 6%. And then I just set it as a formula, I think it is. So every new thing I, I list will also be promoted. I personally probably would not have promoted these video games because this particular game seemed pretty rare. Anyway, it sold. I'm happy with my profit. So after Poshmark fees and stuff, I think I profited around $55 on this. Poshmark fees, eBay fees. Um, buyer did pay shipping on this. And yeah, so that was a really exciting sale. So if you ever come across a Super Smash Brothers game for GameCube, pick it up because I had no idea what this was worth. Um, you guys are probably laughing at me if you noticed two days ago when I was like showing off these games and not realizing how much they were worth. So along those lines, another one of the games that I had in that stash ended up being worth like $200. Um, I'll put the picture of the game here because I can't remember the title of it. But anyway, I was so surprised. But it just goes to show like, if you have the opportunity to learn a new category, um, give it a shot. Like I'm primarily a clothing reseller, but I experiment with hard goods and my cousin was actually giving away all these video games and game consoles. She just, you know, didn't have a need for them anymore. And she had them in a box and was ready to donate them to Goodwill. And I asked about it and she said I could have them. So that was such a good, like just free way to learn a new category because I don't know that I would have looked up these items if I'd seen them at a thrift store. Like I probably wouldn't have because I just, to me, I was, I've never been a video game player. Yeah. Anyway, this morning I did play some video games because I wanted to test them all out and make sure they worked. So I plugged in the PlayStation. I plugged in the GameCube. I played all these games. I lost every single game I played. But um, anyway, it was just fun to learn a new category. I just, I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to do that. So thank you so much to my wonderful cousin who gave me these. I think we're going to have to have a really good girl's day to kind of celebrate all these fun sales and just thank her for just giving me this great inventory. So that was really fun. Um, I'll be on the lookout for video games now and I hope you guys, you know, take a little note from this too, to maybe look up video games when you're at garage sales. It seems like the Mario games tend to do the best. So, I mean, the other game that was worth $200 was not Mario, but um, I think that's a special game. Anyway, Mario games seem to go in the $50 range for what I noticed on the GameCube games. So. Anyway, that was exciting to learn a new category. Today, I am actually going to be modeling. So I have on my like base outfit of my white shirt and high rise mom jeans. So let me go show you what I plan on modeling today. Um, also, if you notice my face, <laughs> it's not looking quite as nice as normal. I don't like wearing a lot of makeup when I model. Um, I just did like eye makeup for you guys so I don't look dead. But um, I don't like to put on foundation and like blush or anything because when you're taking clothes on and off, um, I just don't want to get makeup on it. Like I've done that before and it's really annoying and then it's like I have to wash it. So anyway, I just like to um, keep my face pretty clean. Normally I don't put on any makeup on modeling days because I cut my face out anyway. Um, I did try modeling a few times with my face in it and honestly, I'm just not a fan. I think people can like imagine themselves in the clothes better when my face isn't in the way. Plus, I don't know. It's just like in Poshmark, those pictures last forever and ever and ever. And you know, just pictures of my face on the internet, you know, even though I'm in YouTube videos that are forever on the internet. <laughs> anyway, I'm just not a fan of putting my face in model shots. So, um, yeah, it doesn't matter if my face looks good or not. So anyway, I'll show you what I'm going to model, um, today and get listed. And hopefully guys, I can reach my goal 
Okay, so I just counted and I have 45 listings up so far. Um, some of them were video games, some of them were hard goods, but I just got all those things listed. So let me show you what I plan on getting listed today or at least photographed today and hopefully listed tonight. Okay, so my priority is going to be to start with these um, jackets just because I have on pants and a t-shirt right now so I can just plop these on really quick, plop them on, try these on really quick and model them. So let me show you what I got. I got all of these from estate sales or garage sales. One estate sale my mom went to and we shopped together over Zoom or like FaceTime and then the other one I went to and picked out stuff. So this is a joystick um, blazer. This seems to be going for at least 30 to $40. Um, some people had this listed as Johnny Was. Do you all know? I don't know that that's a line of Johnny Was. It does have Johnny Was vibes, but I don't know that it's Johnny Was. So let me know if you think that is an offshoot of Johnny Was or just um, Johnny Was look like. Okay, this is just a really fun jean jacket. I didn't buy it based on brand. I bought it based on style. I think the patchwork and the rivets just makes it really unique and fun. I also liked this eagling, this eagle <laughs> detail in the back. So the brand on that is Romlop. I don't know. It's vintage though. So really fun jacket. Then I have this Tommy Hilfinger, just um, like tank top, wife beater. I don't know. What do y'all call this? But anyway, this just looked like a cool vintage t-shirt. The tag looks older. So that's why I got it. I'm not going to model that one. <laughs> okay. Another one I'm not going to model. It's just a J Jill top that's new with tags. My mom picked that up for me. Really basic. It should sell on eBay. This one I'm definitely going to model. I think it's really fun. So this is a Dale Earnhardt Jr. style jacket. It's got the Bud Light um, logo on the back and then all of the um, the racing patches. Anyway, this seemed to be going for around $50 to $60 on eBay. So I'm hoping to make a good amount on that one. List high and then, you know, take off or see how it goes. But I didn't see any model shots. So hopefully that helps itself. Okay, a few more. So I have this shirt which is new with tags and that's why I picked it up. I got it from a garage sale. It's um, BB Dakota, new with tags. It was originally $44, but just a really pretty like lace top with a little bit of a bell sleeve. Um, I thought that was just really cute. So this garage sale that I got that from, I got like a big pile of items and the lady sold it all to me for $35. And she goes, are you a reseller? And I was like, yeah. And she said that she used to have an Etsy shop and you know, best of luck to me or whatever. But anyway, and then I have this top that came from the other estate sale with my mom, but it's just like this drapey little top. And I thought this was the front. I thought it was like a pussy bow neckline, but this is the back. So I don't know if you like wrap it around like this and you have like a little tie in the front or if you tie it in the back, but I'll probably model this on my mannequin just because it's button, button back. And I just can't wrap my mind around buttoning a shirt up my back while I'm home alone. So I'll probably end up just putting that on my mannequin. Um, just a grandma core sweater. Um, just lots of embroidery knitting. It does have some discolorations on it, but I'll be sure to disclose that. Not a, even a special brand. It was just, I paid like a dollar for it. I know I can make like 20 off of it. Um, just a cardigan that is velvet. Now this gives me like Y2K vibes. I'm hoping I can just model it cute with this and it'll appear, appeal to those, um, Gen Z people. I don't know. They can wear like their little sparkly sequin tank top underneath or something. I don't know guys. I'm not good at that style. <laughs> Okay, this was fun. This is Aladdin Las Vegas. I don't know if that's like a fancy hotel or casino or what, but it's this denim jacket that has embroidery and then it has like Aladdin's magic carpet on the back. So I just thought that was cool. It was at that estate sale where I bought a big stack of things for $35. So I just thought that would be really fun to model and sell. And I liked the embroidery on it. Okay, next is this Jane Ashley top um and it has like the sequin detailing on it i don't know if the person i bought this from did that herself or if it was already on there because there's another shirt over here that it looks like oh this one that she bejeweled herself so anyway super fun like western style top uh going to a rodeo that's the perfect top to wear anyway this shirt is the brand is just at last i think it's a 90s style top i love this embroidery on the front it's got like this floral embroidery just a nice chambray jean top but then it's been bejeweled on the back and i think she did this herself she was a really crafty lady the lady who had this estate sale we could see a lot of her other craft supplies around the house my mom was telling me about it so yeah and then you can see the backs of it here so it's like she had a little bedazzler machine how many of you guys remember those from when you were a kid <laughs> okay then i have this really fun um dolman sleeve style top um yeah 
So it has like this, is it dolman style? Let me know if I'm saying that wrong. Cocoon style, bat wing, lots of different names I could use there. But it has this pretty bow detailing on it. The brand is Rinse, but um, it's wool blend. So I'll definitely put that in the title. It's a size large, but it's a very oversized size large. Oh yeah, can we talk about the sequins? <laughs> My grandma gave me this and I'm super stoked about it. She wore this, I think, on a cruise. So yeah, hopefully someone else can get somewhere out of this and um, model it or wear it nice and cute for a special event. Going to Vegas, I got the shirt for you. This is really cool. This is like a Penny Lane style jacket. It's not like real Sherpa or anything, but it is really a cute style. The brand is Finger Hut Fashions, which I feel like is like a 70s or late or early 80s brand, but just a really pretty jacket. It's all faux fabric. Nothing feels real or really well made. I don't see a fabric content tag or a size, but I'll model this for reference. But um, I think this should go for around 30 to $40. The other stuff I'd say is just bread and butter vintage besides the Dale Earnhardt jacket. I'm saying like 20 to $30 on all of those things. So vintage is like my bread and butter. That's what I make my 20 to $30 sales on. Sometimes this stuff will sit for a while and it'll go for 15, but I'm happy with that because I cut my cost of goods low. And um, yeah, that's, kind of the price range that you can expect. I'm hoping to get like 30 to $35 for this just because I think it's so cool. So I think I showed this to you in a previous video, but I'm going to model this today. It has that um, lacing detail in the back. And this is a brand that I feel like you should look out for with vintage because Jordi Jordash, Jordic, I don't even know how you pronounce that, is a pretty cool vintage brand. This is not vintage, but it's a faux fur. Seems like it's from like Buckle or something, if I remember correctly, or PacSun. I think I already showed you this, but I'm going to model that today. And then we have this Lawrence Kager jacket. This is 100% um, silk, full sequined. This this was my grandma's. She wore this on a cruise and she looked super cool. So now I'm gonna sell it. And I think this would be just so fun, honestly, with a pair of jeans, just like dress up for a night out. Next are just um, a Hollister sweater that I'll probably end up keeping. Um, I, have, I got this North Face sweater for myself, but guys, these sweaters do not mix well with cats. It is like a cat hair magnet. So I'm gonna like lint roll this thing to death and hopefully just sell it so I don't have to deal with it. Then I have this um, snowsuit that I'm gonna model. I already showed this to you in a previous video though, so I don't wanna bore you. And then I have some um, leather pants. Now last time I listed a pair of leather pants like these, they sold like the same day I listed them in a bundle. I had them listed at 60. I think in the bundle I made like $40 off of them. So I'm excited to list these. They're Lily Rubin and they're real leather. So I'm excited to just get these listed. I think I'll model them again because I feel like that helps them move quick last time. I have some Kelvin Klein jeans. Um, they're like a little kick flare style. They're a high rise kick boot and they're new with tags. So I got those from that garage sale as well. And then the last things I'm gonna model are probably right here. These are just like some prairie style like slip skirts. Um, I'm not sure if I'll layer these or wear them by themselves with a slit underneath it. But I feel like these are really cottage core esque and um, although they were probably used as petticoats or slips before, I feel like people today would wear them with just maybe another slip underneath or without <laughs> and just, you know, enjoy it. So, okay, I do actually have a few more dresses over here that are my size. I forgot about. So I have this dress. It's not a really important brand. I just thought it was a pretty style. Kate and Mallory. I got this for free. I just thought it was cute. So I figured I would model it. 15, 20 bucks on that. Not much. Um, this is a vintage brand. It's just Faded Glory, which is probably like Walmart, but um, really cute denim dress. I think this would look cute chopped at the knee. And if it fits me really good, I might keep it and do that. <laughs> but um, it's just a denim dress that I'm going to model today and might end up keeping because I have a severe weakness for denim and chambray. Okay, and then this Moo Moo, which I showed in a previous haul. It's just a really pretty print. So that is what I plan on modeling today. Will I get it all done? I don't know, but I'm gonna try. Oh, 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 one more piece. This is so fun. This is like a leather jacket. The brand is Contempo Classics. And it is like this really fun, like almost like swing style jacket where it's like a really loose fit. And then there's these, this skirt that matches it. So just a really fun set. I think modeling this will definitely help me get a little bit more for it. So anyway, I have my work cut out for me. I have a lot to model today. Um, that's my goal for today is really just to model all these pieces and photograph them. 
if I end up getting them listed today, that would be super, but I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself for that. But I really would like to hit 100 listings by Saturday. So today's Thursday, so I have a couple days still, but um, yeah, we'll see if I get there, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you like this video, if you like this style of video where it's like more laid back and be kind of showing you around, then um, let me know down below. Or if you like more sit-down style hauls, and um, yeah, just let me know if you like this, guys, because I'm experimenting trying something new. I also wanted to show you guys my new like storage solution that I have going on. So I have this drawer set that my mom found for me on Facebook Marketplace, which does match my other drawers. But um, yeah, I have my hard goods in there. These are my own personal shoes, but I feel like they're just better stored in there. And then down here underneath my storage area, I put my other shoe rack and that's where I'm gonna put shoes that I can resell. Then I extended my clothing rack so it'll store more. So I've fully extended and I kind of like that because then I can hang up more at once. So yeah, I've just kind of reorganized things. This is all stuff to donate. This is all stuff that um, needs to be photographed still because that's my little death pile right there. And then I wanted to show you guys this new camera tripod I got. I got this from a garage sale for $3. It's made in Japan and it's like a vintage tripod and I really like it. It's got like this little thing where you can raise it or lower it, but it's just easier for videotaping anywhere because my other tripod is just really big and clunky, but this is like a little easy travel tripod. So it'll be helpful for maybe those thrift with me videos or just when I travel. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.